guys, what's up? Hope everybody's had a good day out there today and thanks for tuning back in to another edition here of Intuitive Angling. And today we're gonna to talk about, I'm gonna give you guys some good tips on springtime crankbait fishing. Sort of some secrets that I've learned about it over the years. You know, we're starting to get into it, you know, pretty big time all over the country. So I got some stuff that I think is gonna definitely help you catch a few more bass this spring. But real quick, just wanna remind everybody, give you the weekly update. If anybody's interested in booking an on the water lesson with me, um, I'm usually taking people out uh, Table Rock, Stockton Lake here in Southwest Missouri. Um, all you have to do is shoot me a private message on my Facebook page or Andy Blockett Professional Angler and I'll give you the, all the info on that. So much appreciated. Okay guys, let's talk. I'm just, uh, like I said, just heading back from Table Rock Lake right now. I've been fishing over there all day long. Starting to get spring. Water temperatures are starting to get up in the low 50s. And, uh, you know, it's really nice starting to get the grass. The grass is just starting to get green in places. And uh, I think everybody's glad winter's sort of behind or out the back door here. But anyway, when you're talking about springtime crankbait fishing, I'm talking primarily up until the bass start spawning. So the, when the water temperature is in the 50s, like it is across the country in a lot of places right now, um, that's the time that I'm talking about you need to capitalize on the springtime crankbait fishing. There's normally a transition that takes place from sort of like the late winter, early pre-spawn into the, what I consider the early spring uh, period, when those fish, they, they don't suspend as much. All the fish that guys were catching on a jerk bait, Alabama rig and swim baits, uh, those same fish start to move a little bit shallower and they, they become prime targets for crankbaits. That's why guys crankbait fishing is one of the top techniques in the spring time of the year, in the early spring. It, it's a great way to catch numbers and quality fish couple different things you want to look for on this. First of all, when you're talking about cranking when the water temperature is in the 50s, and unless you're fishing a grass lake, which a grass lake you can't relate to this, if you're fishing a man-made impoundment that has some type of rock structure on it, the things that you want to look for are the steeper banks right off the bat. So I'm wanting to look for banks that have like anywhere between say a 40 to 60 degree angle on it. This is where the pre-spawn springtime crankbait fishing is gonna be best. So the first thing is, you know, it doesn't matter if it's in coves, main lake or creeks, whatever, look for those steeper banks. It, not bluff banks, but just steeper type banks that drop off pretty quick. Secondly, look for banks that have some type of a mixed rock variation on it. Um, best areas are, you know, anything between car size hood rocks to basketball size rocks to gravel. Um, that mixed rock variation is another big key to catching them on the crankbaits in the spring. Third on that is concentrate on rock transitions. Rock transitions aren't the only place you can catch them, but they're high percentage areas. So I like to cover water with a crankbait, but when I get to the transition area, I'm really slowing down a lot. I'm making multiple casts, casts on the transition area because there's usually always a fish on those rock transition areas. Next thing you wanna remember is you've got to fish parallel to the bank. The, the fish in the springtime of the year when you're cranking, they get real specifically set up on, on different depth zones. Sometimes they're in three foot of water, sometimes they're in five foot, sometimes they're in 10 foot. And a lot of this is based upon the water clarity and the angle of the bank that you're fishing. So once you start you know, identifying the depth that you think the fish are living in, parallel the bank in that depth zone. So if I'm catching them, say for example, parallel on the bank on Beaver Lake in Arkansas where the water's clear, I may be parallel in a 10 foot of water. If I'm parallel in a, a dirty water lake like Grand Lake, I may be parallel in a three foot of water. But casting parallel with a crankbait in the spring is gonna get you a lot more bites on that. <clears throat> Next thing you wanna remember is make long casts and work your bait with a medium to slow stop and go retreat. This is another key deal. Water temperatures are still cold. You wanna make sure that you're not working that bait too fast. <coughs> and also, <coughs> keep your don't let your bait get into a uniform rhythm of just cranking it back to the boat. Use a stop and go retrieve with some type of a medium, uh, medium retrieve speed on it. And the last thing is vary your colors based upon the sunlight conditions and the water clarity. The top three colors in the, uh, the springtime of the year are your reds, your, your fire tigers, and your shads. So if you're fishing 
dirty water, concentrate on your shad patterns. If you're fishing a water that's a little bit cleaner, you can go to the crawdad patterns or the shad patterns. So anyway, guys, that's just a few tips with it. Um, I also, I throw most all my springtime crankbaits on spinning rod. I'll put them on a spinning rod with eight to 12 pound test line. The reason I like using the spinning rod is I think you can feel the bait better when it's coming across rocks at that speed. It makes you, allows you to make longer casts in the wind, especially, uh, or if there's any type of wind and it allows you to use a lighter line to get that bait down deeper if you need to as well. So anyway, guys, hope you guys enjoyed the tip. Much appreciated. And please hit that subscribe button. If you haven't, that'd be much appreciated as well. So we'll talk to y'all later.